Hey guys, thanks for checking out another video here at Quixel. My name is Galen and today we're gonna to be covering a quick breakdown of this material that I recently made inside of Mixer. Uh, we're gonna be kind of rolling through some of the different layers and, and approaching this mix, um, looking at some of the different procedural aspects that I included uh, on top of layering some very basic scans to kind of give me this final result. So let's go ahead and jump in. I also want to mention here quickly before we start that we've made Quixel Mixer free while it's in beta. So if you go to quixel.com right now, you can download the beta for free and we'll be in beta for about the next year. We're going to be making a ton of updates, so be sure to get the beta now and we're really excited to see what you guys come up with. So as you can see here inside of Mixer, my layer stack is actually pretty simple. Uh, I only use just a handful of layers to give me this result. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So let's go ahead and start breaking it down. So I was going for maybe like a rock geode type, uh, type look. So I'll go ahead and just start deactivating some of these layers so you can see the process real quick. And then I'm gonna dive in so that we can actually kind of see what each of these different layers kind of does. So from the start here, what you can see is that I, I've, I've started with just a really simple noise. And uh, we're, we have this new tab over here called Add Component. And this allows you to add in a couple different new goodies here inside of Mixer. But I used a noise component here and I'm using a Warly Type 1. Now what this allows me to do is really kind of basically create a couple of really kind of simple uh, patterns inside of Mixer where I can affect the seed and amplitude, frequency and octave and really kind of create something uh, custom. So I layered this on top of just another solid layer. This is just a, a very simple solid uh, that I added here at the top. And I'm using this basically as a visualization layer for my masking. And I'm gonna be layering more scans on top of this to get the final result. But I wanted to start with just a solid so that I was able to kind of see the things that I was doing with the patterns below. So I created a pretty standard Whirly type pattern here inside of Mixer. And it's, nothing, it's not really doing anything too crazy. As you can see, I don't even have any of these other components in the stack for this. All I'm going to do here is literally duplicate this once I have something that I kind of like. So I hit Control D and that basically just creates a brand new uh, layer that's a copy of everything in that layer below. Now I already have this kind of set up to the way I want it to but I'll, I'll just show you really briefly what this does. From the layer below this is setting to blend from above. Okay so the big difference here is that when I duplicated this I'm now setting the blend to from below. Now if you see what happens here as I slide the threshold from top to bottom, this really kind of allows me to do a couple of cool things. Uh, and in this example, I, I'm getting a nice result of like maybe some rocky type surface. And this is really exactly what I was going for pretty much out of the box. Now the big difference here is that I wanted to create a wrap to base that was slightly different from the layer below because on the top layer here, I actually don't want this to wrap to that base at all. The reason for that simply being that I want this to actually extrude in the same way that you would do normal polygonal modeling. So as you can see, I've pulled this up slightly and this is really kind of creating a nice shape to start. Added in a third layer here of noise, and I'll run you through that real quick. So simply what it did, if I zoom in here, you can kind of see it a little bit better, but it created some nice chips and, and really, again, keeping this incredibly simple because I didn't want to make this too complicated. So I really kind of, I, I literally just went ahead and created a brand new noise that was actually a Warly Type 2. Now Warly Type 2 really kind of allows me to, to kind of create this kind of chipped pattern and chipped kind of look. Now again, here what I can do is I can start to mess around with the different seeds, maybe affect the frequency. If I increase the amplitude, this allows me to really kind of bring out some big chips in this. But I want it to be relatively small in the amplitude because I didn't really want this to be affecting it too much. So I'm tuning it down slightly to kind of get it this nice kind of chipped pattern. But the layers below are really what's driving the shape. So the thing here I'm doing is I'm blending from above 
And I'm wrapping this to base only slightly and I'm actually removing some of the base details. So as you can see, if I affect this in a little bit more of a controlled way, this allows me to get something that's kind of a nice mix between the layers below and what I'm doing here with this Warly Type 2. And that's basically it for the base shapes. Now the thing that's really cool about the parametric approach to what we've added here inside of Mixer is that I can go in now and start to change these values in the noise layers to where I can actually affect this and create some very different looks from what I currently have. So if I wanted to, I could amp up the amplitude or I could go into the frequency and make it larger or smaller. All I would need to do is just make sure that as I'm transferring those, those values, that the layer top and bottom for these two layers here as the base are the same. That's the only thing. So basically what I'm allowed to do now is create infinite variations of this, which is really super nice. It allows me that flexibility to maybe go in and really kind of affect some basic changes on, the, on a parameter level. So then all I did here on top was actually use another solid layer to kind of give me a base starting place for my albedo and gloss values because I wanted to kind of lightly apply some scans here on top but not do anything that's really too crazy because we don't have this material scanned yet but I'm sure we will in the future. So what I wanted to do is just kind of start with a very simple solid here and this is just a really kind of dark blue and uh, then the gloss is kind of set to something that's pretty high, like very shiny in its, in its kind of look here. But that's just kind of a starting place for my albedo and gloss. So what I wanted to do is layer on some other scans here. And this is really kind of what I think the power of Mixer really kind of showcases. Is that what I'm able to do now is layer on some nice photo quality scans on top of this to create something brand new. We have a really nice kind of frozen lake texture that just went up on the site. And I have this turned down pretty low, but what I can do here is start to really affect some nice fine detail on the surface that otherwise I wouldn't get from just um, some, some basic noise. So, so I wanted to kind of add, add in an actual photo source for my noise here next. I have the opacity turned down really low. I wrapped it all the way to the base. So it's not even really affecting any of the shapes down below. But if I wanted to, I could kind of let, let up on the wrap to base slider and kind of let it actually remove some of those base details if I was to increase, say, the opacity on this. But for now, I'm pretty happy with kind of how this looks. So I'm gonna leave it as it was. And then I'll move on to the next layer. So again, just layering on more of these kind of scan details in order to give me something brand new. So the scratch painted steel here was a nice kind of scan that we had. It's literally a metal scan, so uh, as the name suggests here. But all it does is kind of create some nice subtleties on the, uh, on the surface. And all I did was kind of turn down the opacity really low and I get some of these nice like little scratches that really just kind of add to the overall believability of this piece. And I have it turned down again really low. I only want this to really maybe have an effect on like the, the roughness or the gloss here. So I'm not really looking for this to do too much as I have it completely wrapped to the base and uh, it's not removing any of that base detail down below. The last thing honestly is a really simple mix here of some basic concrete. And you know, I changed some of the values here in the diffuse and gloss so that I could kind of get something that was more in line with what I was thinking about for this material. But ultimately, all I did was affect this from down below. And as you can see, if I start to slide this up or down, you know, I'm given something that's kind of nice just right out of the box with this. So I can affect the radius if I want to. As I'm affecting the radius, as you can see here, if I turn it down, the fall off is gonna be really, really sharp. So I get this kind of really sharp line here. I wanted to actually bring in a little bit more detail uh, from this scan because it's just super nice. It has a nice fall off nature to it. So I wanted to bring in some of that as it kind of creeps up some of these little, these little uh, geodes. So as you can see here, this is basically all I did. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was removing the base details down below as I kind of have a little bit of, of some of the, the noise from down below creeping up and I want to remove that completely. So as this kind of creeps up, it's removing all of that detail down below, which is really nice. It allows me to create nice transitions between the two. 
and now I've got something completely brand new. So that's pretty much it for this mix. It was really pretty basic. I wanted to not spend a ton of time really kind of creating a, a complex stack necessarily for this and just kind of layer on some nice scans on top to create something brand new. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you have any call outs for things that you would like to see us break down or anything at all, definitely leave us a comment down below and we'll be making a ton of these videos going forward. Really looking forward to seeing what the community comes up with. Thanks guys, we'll see you on the next video.